Hello, my beautiful co-creators of the new paradigm, and thank you for tuning in again on my YouTube channel. Today, I have with me as a guest on the show, Ruben Langdon, uh, with whom I have been um, recording some of our new channelings uh, already back in 2016, when he was already putting together all the material for um, what turned out to be the interviews with Extra Dimensional series that is now on Gaia television. We had no idea it would end up there at the time. <laughs> I would almost say we were so blue. <laughs> yep. uh, but now we're so many years later and uh, Ruben has invited me uh, again for a continuation of that very exciting um, adventure. And of course, he has developed a lot. I have grown in my own personal way. And we have met for another really interesting interview and uh, a channeling with our doing yet again, this time on his um, membership program of interviews with extra dimensionals. Um, so he is taking it uh, another step further down the line. And this is why uh, I invited you to speak about this more. So. Ruben, oh, can you, you explain to everybody who's watching um, <laughs> what you're doing with this program, what inspired you to, to change it in this direction and how you're shaping that? Awesome. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Um, and thanks for, for being a part of it. Uh, that was an awesome session we had a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, so I, I'm kind of calling the interview with Ed 2.0. It's, you know, the show is still continuing. Season three just got, uh, started to get released on Gaia now. So they, uh, Gaia's picked up 12 episodes of, of sort of my version of season three, um, which is about 30 episodes, it will, will be 30 episodes. Um, so Gaia selected 12 and they're doing a limited release. I'm hoping the, um, it, it it takes off and they come back and get the other episodes. But but uh, there's been a two year lull in um, in them from releasing season two. So uh, I wasn't sure if they were even going to take season three. I, I just I sort of told them I said, hey, I'm going to do this, uh, and uh, you know, sending them the screeners as episodes would come would get finished, and then uh, and then eventually they're like, eh, I think we're ready to take it on. So I was like, oh yay. Um, so that that's still going and developing. I'm not sure if there's going to be a season four. I've got a lot of other projects uh, on my plate. Uh, however, these conversations are so amazing. And, um, and, you know, one episode, because of the amount of work that goes into it, it's not something that I just do and put out there right away. It takes, you know, it takes me about a month to now. Uh, initially, I, I was able to put them out pretty quick. But they've the show's expanded and grown and the quality and the different aspects uh it takes me a good you know month of 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 post processing to to get through that to get it out to the to the audience in the way that i i would like it to get out there so it doesn't ha the the information sometimes is is dated a year uh before it comes out because i mm. film the episodes you know, I have other episodes already in queue that I'm working on and editing. And then I finally get the episode out. And then, you know, and then for perhaps Gaia, you know, like they took time to release their episode. So it's not a up to date in real time type of conversation. It, the, the information is timeless. Uh, your information still is, you know, going back 2016 and in, in the interview we did, there's a lot of really good nuggets in there that are still relevant for, for today. But what uh what i realized is that if if i could have the the information uh or the conversation con one continue the conversation because I, there's other projects i want to get to and um support those who have been following the the you know my thread and the show and uh and just can keep that going uh was sort of the intention behind uh putting the members page and then i realized as i was putting it together there's so many other aspects to uh, to what I'm doing in my life um, that's beyond what was discussed in the show, but yet relevant to the um, teachings and the information that's coming through the show. Um, you know, for example, things of what what can we do in our day to day life to raise our vibration and our frequency, and um, and I feel I'm doing it. You know, I feel like I'm 
since starting the show, I've really uh, learned a lot. And um, that was one of the reasons sort of putting myself in the show instead of doing just like a documentary style talking head type thing. I put myself in the show to ask the questions to show people my journey because, you know, I, we're all, it's an evolution, you know, with the, the, the conversation is, is an evolution and I'm ready and willing to take this information and apply it into my life and do something with it. And then to show, Hey, this is, this is what can happen if you follow these, these basic, uh, you know, rules or nuggets of information or not rules. Anyways, if you, the information and the tool, the tools, if you use the tools that are being given to us through the show, you can really make a positive change in your personal life and hopefully in your community. And Mm -hmm. that's my goal with the information uh, is to share it in that way. So anyways, there's a lot of subcategories and tools and different nuggets that in the um in the portal the membership portal i'm calling it uh that i can share and and again do quicker and faster than let's say producing a tv show right that's there's a lot of work that goes into producing a tv show so uh, with all that said yeah that's that's sort of my intention behind it and it feels like it's going in that direction and we have an awesome uh group of members that continues to grow and um yeah i appreciate you coming and playing with us and continuing the conversation yes it's my absolute pleasure i I really do see it as um we spoke a little bit before this interview started this Mm -hmm. recording and um i said already then it, it feels a little bit like um you're taking it down to earth you're really bringing it down to earth and I'm just observing as you're sharing right now, mm-hmm. um, it sounds to me like when you started recording these interviews, so way before you knew it was even going to end up on Gaia, right. you were following your own highest excitement, obviously, mm-hmm. your own heart's calling, and it was up to speed with the tempo wherein it was released by then on YouTube, because that's yeah. where it first ended up. Yes. Um, and if it sounds a bit as if you've brought back into reality for yourself you've re-manifested that being in lockstep with your passion and now it's you're keeping up to speed with the production or the results or up to speed with what you're doing is that true yeah yeah because we're having the conversation you know weekly like we are now and then Mm -hmm. um when you produce a TV show, there's certain expectation with the production value and, you know, the sound and the music and your, yeah. it's, it's, it's a production, right. And, um, and especially if you're going through a paywall, like, um, uh, uh, like Gaia, right. So they have certain quality standards that they need a show to be, uh, to, to, you know, to, to warrant their, their membership. And, uh, so, for me, I, I, I couldn't, <clears throat> uh, with with the, the, the demand of the way the show's going, I couldn't keep up with that in real time. And now mm. going back to the portal now, uh, it is behind a paywall, which helps support me to do the work, but it's, uh, it's more real time. It's, it's, um, uh, yeah, the, the, I don't have to do a slick edit and, you know, an intro and those are nice and stuff, but they take, all, it's a lot of work and takes yeah. a lot of time um so uh so yeah i'm able to sort of work at a at a more uh <laughs> realistic speed so i'm not busting my butt and 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 uh i can I, so i can actually do these things because there's a lot of um the, the gardening and these things i i enjoy doing and i like doing that and i want to show people that i like doing that i want to show people that it's that it is possible uh but if i'm in the editing bay 24 7 you know, trying to make slick, polished movies about that, then I'm mm-hmm. not enjoying that aspect. I'm, it's all about the editing now. And uh, yeah. so, so it's, 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 it's finding that balance and this is how I'm doing it. It's a beautiful, creative way to do it. And a very inspirational to other people as well. I think to really see somebody walk the talk and taking those precious nuggets from all those channelings and actually, you know, like, putting them down to earth Mm -hmm. because that's what the gardening is obviously and um just a freestyle selection from what i've heard you uh, mention as short topics on this membership portal already Mm -hmm. 
uh, are subjects like NFTs, crypto, mm -hmm. um, yep. permaculture, mm -hmm. CE fives. You organize your own CE fives, and you yes. actually you actually share the results of these gatherings on the, in the portal as well. Yes, correct. Yeah, every yeah. every Amazing. every month. Of sort of starting last, I guess it's been, it's been almost a year. Wow, last February uh, or April, somewhere in there. Uh, I sort of been hinting on the idea and, and trying to bring the community together, my local community, to to uh, to do CE fives, and we because there was some you know some hip, cool, cool young folks who were into uh, bringing together these gatherings in the woods. Um, and they would invite me to go and, and teach Wim Hof uh, breath work. Oh, and, nice. uh, and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. I, thanks guys for inviting me. I love teaching in this sense. And, and then I, I kept saying, hey, by the way, there's this other modality. It's called CE5. We can actually call ETs. And they're like, what? Okay. <laughs> you almost lost us with the breath work. You're, you're really losing us now with this ET thing. But I, I had piqued enough people's curiosity. So they... So we, we finally got a, a gathering together and I could tell where everybody's at. It was a nice exploration for, for many, but not many were as convinced that we could uh, call ETs in, uh, even mm. though some people of the group did have experiences, some didn't. Um, so it was very select. However, that was enough for me to be like, okay, this is something I want to do now every month. I don't want to just do this, uh, uh, you know, once or twice a year kind of thing. And um, so uh, there's another woman, Latal, who's part of Lisa Royale's, um, she's one of her students as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's sort of who we've, we've teamed, her and I have teamed up and we're now offering um CE5 to anybody in Southern California, we sort of put it out there. Anybody, you don't have to be a part of the membership portal. Just come and hang out with us. Uh, we're going to do these every new moon. And, and uh, you know, what I get out of it is, yes, I do record it and I'll put it on the portal for, for my thing. But um, more importantly, is I, I can feel the energy building every month now that we're doing this and we're getting mm -hmm. repeaters and we're finding that coherence uh, within the group and there's new people and we want to keep it open and rotating. You know, we want people to, to come and experience this, this energy, uh, and then go back and do your own C5s, you know, with your own mm -hmm. groups. Um, mm -hmm. but it, it is exciting to, uh, to, it's an exciting thing to do. You know, it's on the calendar. We're going to do this every month, you know, and one part of it, it there's always this anxiety and buildup leading up to the event, um, I guess just like with anything you're going to do, but it is getting less like you're doing it every month now. So we're finding a flow. It's not the, and the anxiety is dropping a little bit. It's not as, mm -hmm. uh, um, there's, there's still a nervousness of like, okay, we're going to go into this field again. It's like doing a, a you know, walking on the stage a little bit uh -huh. and doing, doing, yes. doing a, a, a live concert or a live event, but there is the energy the, the energy that comes with that you know when you do walk out on stage and you have an audience there that's that's charged in in sync with let's say I, i'm not a performer in the music sense but i'm imagining you know some of those musicians the energy that they're helping uh nav uh, navigate or or um funnel with yeah. their songs and with the energy behind that so in a sense that's what we're doing every week or i'm sorry every month yeah every new moon so very exciting uh and it continues to our last one was really nice it was really powerful we had we had craft show up and um and oh, everybody awesome. saw them uh so up until the last one it was really like a very selective you know some people saw things some people didn't some mm -hmm. people we a lot of us stay the night in the location that we do the c5 if weather permitting and um and and stay in that energy so it's usually late later other people who stayed they would oh i saw this or i had this dream or you know, had this mm -hmm. contact experience so yeah. um so that that's an aspect that's growing it's not directly you know uh in sort of the membership portal but it is something i like to bring in and let people know that hey this yeah. is what we're doing yeah, you're sharing the progress, the journey that you're on with these other people. And I mean, wow, the way you're just describing the buildup of that momentum. Mm -hmm. And 
and this is, I think, what we're doing. Anyone who decides to do CE fives uh, once in a while or regularly, and that excitement, I know so what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's just so wonderful because we are getting familiar with a really, really extensive part of ourselves in a way that is being reflected back to us by these beings mm -hmm. um and it is super exciting to get into touch with that on a regular basis and to make it more like a casual thing you know yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's casual it's, that's it's, it yeah 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 we we may not be there yet but mm -hmm. the fact that you have had uh, an increase in clarity of the sightings does reflect that back to you and and i can say that to everybody else who has that curiosity um, if nothing shows up, you know, <laughs> like may happen many times, mm -hmm. then you never, you never went for no reason. There's always something you gained just yep. if only in introducing yourself with your own, maybe still existing anxiety or fears or doubts or yeah. all these beliefs also want to be seen. So you're, you're, every time you go with that intent, you're, you're peeling down another layer and it's a really interesting journey that I can only recommend. So Thank you for inspiring people on that as well. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, thanks absolutely. for that reflection. That's uh, uh, you're right. It is something that um, whether you see the lights in the sky or not, there is some mm -hmm. sort of uh, growth and um, yeah, uh, uh, you know, evolution to to this. I'm I'm seeing it in myself just in doing the offerings. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for sure, the groups. The, the the people who come and, and you know we we always have whether they had a sighting or not there's always a um uh a, a you know th th thankfulness and and gratitude for the mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. yeah and we grow a different type of perception i guess mm -hmm. also in our individual lives you may go to this once and then bring home a way more conscious way of well, you could take it very literal and physical of observing the skies, right? Uh, you know, and and as a result of that, see way more wonderful, beautiful clouds that we have very often, anyway. You know, yeah. Uh, and then that has enriched your life in that way, but it yeah. may also bring a more deeper conscious awareness of your dreams or mm -hmm. certain sensitivities of you know walking into a room where somebody or some people just had a meditation and sensing a vibration that is similar to what you experienced on the ce5 and then putting one and one together we're oh it's so nuanced but it's so super interesting to see how these things are evolving for people and and something that is what i what i notice is the physical action of doing it of course you can mm -hmm. do ce5s anywhere you can sit in your room and you can yeah. make contact you don't have to yeah. go out into uh, you know, the woods and under the stars. But when you do take that action and uh, come together in a group in that sense um, and uh, and every and, and sort of harmonize the intentions, mm -hmm. um, again, whether you're seeing anything or not, the intention of you making that effort, the mm -hmm. uh, the connection of everybody, sitting under the stars and we play, you know, Latal plays these amazing sound bowls and gongs. So we're getting mm. this amazing uh, sound healing vibration uh, under the stars and, you know, in yeah. the best, the best setting that you could possibly get a healing, uh, um, you know, uh, type of sound healing. Uh, and then I incorporate breath work into the, um, into the mix to, uh, to sort of open the portal so we're doing breath work. We're we're doing so wh whether you you have a see you know an, an actual craft show up or not, it, it's just a nice um, coming of together and gathering of 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 uh, of people and the and the actions themselves or taking mm -hmm. those actions is a is a reflection to the universe that yes. hey I'm ready for this contact thing I'm ready yes. to to do this. And that's why we decided to do it every month is because I want to make that physical action and let the universe know every month. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Commitment. Commitment. I'm ready yes. This. Well, this is, this is the declaration to your higher self or the yeah. universe or whatever you want to call it, that, that you are ready. And if you do take it, well, quote unquote, seriously, that yeah. You, yeah. And I, I think any type of man, of manifestation uh, requires that level of um, allowance. We have to mm -hmm. allow it in, and we're not open to allow something that we're not, um, or that we say we're not 
um, open to take action upon any action. So we're just really, it's really preparing for, you know, quote unquote landing in a way, <laughs> even though yeah. it comes from within and not from without. Yeah. Uh, it's both. It's both. Yeah. You see a constant yes. reflection and you can approach it from the one angle and from the other. And yeah. in either case, I think commitment is a wonderful and very beautiful statement. <laughs> so thank you for doing this. Yeah. Um, and let's see, um, there's like two things that I'm kind of like wondering, which which topic would you like to explore further? I have okay. all my little notes here. Either we can go a little bit more into uh, the more mainstream news flashes that we've seen surrounding this closure that I know okay. we've spoken about before. We could go there. Mm -hmm. Or would you would you like to dive into the validation of the positive that can also come from researching shadow side stories and maybe the two can be even intertwined i i, I think know. if we start with the ufo subject since we're just talking about c5s i think naturally yeah. we're going to go into some, all right <laughs> some of those dark <laughs> things that we'll have to integrate uh the the shadow side of things so uh why right. don't we start with the ufo disclosure and all right because uh, that's something we've talked about in the past you know we, mm -hmm. we you and i we share this um uh this fascination with the subject matter disclosure and mm -hmm. and how it's coming out slowly we did our area 51 uh talk many years ago yes. when my so buddy Jer jeremy corbell was producing an event over um at oh, area 51 yeah. that was spawned from a meme of uh <laughs> some it's crazy storm uh, area 51 storm area 51 <laughs> yeah. which uh you know was and, and it, you know, it had its two seconds of fame in the moment, but uh, but it was great. You know, we talked about how mm -hmm. what a positive thing this is um, on this on, on on bringing disclosure into consciousness, and we continue to have uh, positive affirmations in the mainstream media um, and in 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 the recent congressional. Uh, discussion i don't want to say hearings i guess they were hearings even though they didn't feel like hearings um mm -hmm. it was more of a congressional discussion about the subject um which is the first time you know in 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 uh 60 plus years to to have that in in that former fashion uh besides the citizen hearing which we've talked about the con mock congressional yeah. hearing that i produced back in 2013 The conclusion I've come to is incredibly wild, that those in charge have been successful in keeping secret the greatest story of mankind. The evidence is overwhelming that Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft. The CIA guy standing next to me says, we're confiscating all this data and you're all sworn to secrecy. Every American and the whole world deserves the truth about non-humans interacting with this planet mm -hmm. but uh yeah it's it's uh it's it's slowly making its way out and as it does um which, which is so awesome there's a huge group of people that are um saying hey something's wrong with this it's a limited hangout um they're only covering certain cases they're only cert only mm -hmm. certain people are be are giving the mic to to have the discussion and uh why is it why is it so um in a sense Di censored or directed yes or di directed yeah. yeah the conversation is yeah. definitely being directed a certain way and uh and there's you know we we had mentioned earlier that you know Stephen Greer had been calling uh this out for a long time he's been talking about this fake alien invasion card that the dark cabal is going to try to play and they're going to try to present the um the whole et uh conversation through a lens of uh a threat you know we don't know what it is and it's going to um they're going to uh have some sort of nefarious intentions and uh and then the you know the the elite are going to use that narrative to try to um instill more draconian uh totalitarian um 
uh, control mechanisms within society. That is mm -hmm. sort of, that's the, the quick gist of the false yeah. flag alien invasion narrative. And, mm -hmm. you know, to, to give Greer credit at the time when he first came out with all this, uh, it, it was like, okay, Greer. Yeah. Some of these people, <laughs> uh, could be that, but we don't really know. And you're kind of throwing a lot of people under the bus and you're making a lot of enemies. <laughs> um, perhaps it might be a little too early to, to say, and, um, Again, to give Greer credit, I think he did name many of the uh, the, the the folks that are. Mm, I don't I don't want to say working for the dark side in a sense or working for the nefarious agendas. I don't think personally. I don't think they're conscious of who they're working for. Mm. I don't think they have ill intent. Th these mm. individuals. I think they think they're doing the right things, mm -hmm. and. And uh, and it's just the bot their boss that they're working for, mm. perhaps may have the uh, and who knows maybe even the boss. I think this is where things get really confusing. Is uh, we because something that you know obviously is nefarious in certain ways as far as uh, you know some of these agendas. Uh, for, it's 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 clear that that what they're doing is 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 bad or evil. Um, I don't think that the people who are doing it see it that way in the sense mm -hmm. that they, they, you can't, you can't see it that way. Otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. I think many of them have these, uh, different warped perspectives of reality where, where it may be okay to harm somebody or to, uh, lie or twist the truth about certain things for this benefit for this thing or whatever but it's not so cut and dry and and i'm starting to ramble because i'm trying to be nice about how i present this and i'm like just get cut to the chase <laughs> <laughs> um but basically no there there's uh i there's a a lot of good people with good intentions that are doing what they believe is right and um and that and where i think everybody's in that camp and mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, it's just really about uh, pulling it all back and saying, is that, you know, is this right for me or is this right for the collective? And ultimately leaving the leaving it up to the collective to decide. I think that's where we get where we can sort of find that yeah. balancing is not to push any agendas not to push my, even though I have agendas, I want everybody to see five tomorrow, you know, let's, <laughs> let's call in the ships, but not everybody's ready for disclosure. Not everybody's ready to start their backyard gardening and, and do these things. And, and it's, and it's going to happen organically. People are going to be motivated to do it or not motivated to look into disclosure or not motivated mm -hmm. to listen to what the TV says about it, or do the deep dive and look into and do more research it's a, everybody's on their own, on their own path on this. And, and we just let, let, let the cards fall, you know, as they do. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and, and if you're really interested in the subject matter, we're, you know, we're having this conversation now we're dropping the nuggets. Yes, there is a alien invasion agenda. And uh, there's more and more evidence now that is providing uh, us clarity on the players involved what the agenda is, when and how they might release it, and not to create uh, uh, fear-based conspiracy theories. There's enough, in my opinion, there's enough evidence now to warrant much of the stuff that that Greer was sort of screaming at, you know, a year or two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. We now have that evidence, and um, and it, and it's just it's great. It's it's and again, it's not to throw people under the bus because they are projecting certain agendas, um, but to call a spade a spade and say, hey, dude, you know, that might not be the best approach to how to get this information out. But we don't know. There's still so many unknowns. We don't know if this guy is, you know, a secret agent working for the White Hats, pretending to be this guy in the cabal so he can get the information out. So at this peak, perfect timing, Disclosure will come out in a non-threat, you know, a benevolent way, so everybody can 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 receive it. 
we don't know who's doing what behind the scenes mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. we can keep our watchful eye on these um agendas and, and and topics but at the end of the day you know if you have that watchful eye then you have the watchful eye and then when it does present itself fully you can say no mm, that's not for me mm -hmm. but until then we don't know until then i think we should still give everybody the benefit of the doubt and mm -hmm. uh um and you know and and try to you know don't give the entire floor to them to speak, but give them, you know, a little bit of a voice. Okay. Let's hear your information. Okay. That's cool. Let's look at the next thing. And then where we get in trouble is when we start trying to censor, when this one guy says, mm -hmm. everybody else is wrong and just listen to me. Then you're like, okay, now I'm going to stop listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So, that's a big red then. flag right yes, there. <laughs> big red flag. So until then take it all in and take it with a grain of salt take all the information and all the bits and pieces of, of um, you know, and all the bickering and the name calling and all of the, U the UFO communities full of that, uh, take it all in and, and find what resonates with you and, um, and make the choice. Okay. You know, that's, that's kind of BS, but you don't have to like scream at the top of your lungs and call fire when the fire is just a spark or it's not, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's not fire yeah, yet. Yeah. So just, you know, we have to move now. It's, it's, we're navigating through extraordinary times, not just in the UFO um, subject, but in, in all subjects. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is like the limbo state or something <laughs> like anything could happen. Like it's <laughs> everything is up in the air. Um, yes. And and what you just said about either fire or spark, these mm -hmm. little sparks are observed as seeds that may sprout and grow into a certain direction. Right. And this is the the beauty of our of our um, individual and collective imagination. We call it into being with our focus on this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the wonderful journey is to constantly bring it back in and into self reflection and to realize, wow, I have this huge playing field to pick and choose from. Um, how do I want to look at this information? And, and that kind of brings me to the um, validation of the positive and finding it actually in very unexpected corners. Because amongst all of that, um, back and forth of these type of discussions, there are some really interesting ideas and very fruitful, uh, inspirational thoughts as well. And it's just a matter of through what filter do we choose to look at all of this? Can we find the overview perspective and see the overall development that we as a human species are growing through while we are going through the process of facing our fears, our own insecurities and projecting whatever we think is going on out there <laughs> well, onto well, other just, people. Just to back up just for a second. So... Mm -hmm. uh, what you just said is beautiful and I agree a hundred percent, but there's something that I noticed that you said that I have seen other people, including myself get mm -hmm. caught up in is when we focus on certain things, you say that when we focus, don't focus on the negative, right? We say that's a, ah, in the, in okay, the yeah, no, I, I know where you're going in the community, <laughs> especially in this world where we're always like, you know, don't focus on those things because you're going to manifest it. Right. So we, have a conversation about an alien invasion. Like, don't talk about that nonsense. You're going to oh, invite it in. No, right. I'm not talking about avoidance. I'm right, not right, talking right. about No, avoidance. I know. I just, I'm, I know you're not, but yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to Oh, you're adding this for listener. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, do look at it. Do mm -hmm. talk about it. And that's yep. why I think it's so cool that in your membership portal, mm -hmm. this is all on the table. Like, I applaud that. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think that these, this is all that's available to us and that's what we're looking at. And right. then you can choose to direct your own focus from all that's there without, you know, discarding one thing or another or censoring anybody there because that's the red flag, right? Yes. So yes. And, then, and then take the, um, you know, like the, the focus, I don't know how, how, how you would say that, the focus point from your heart or your inner knowing and just observe, oh, wh where's the light? in all of this because there always is and Absolutely. the thing is we we wouldn't even get to discover that light if we negated it but uh, at forehand or beforehand so that's yeah. why i do think we we need to um 
Oh, well, well, if it excites you, I want want to nuance that a little bit. If it excites you, if you have that interest, if you have that curiosity, uh, there's no way you can walk in there into this informational field while uh, tiptoeing. You're going to have to put your whole foot down. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I've, so I've got and, a little and, camera at you. Keep, keep going. I'm I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I think, uh, I think you're, you're suddenly outside. <laughs> and right. There's a little picture of you outside. Um, but so, yeah, I think by remaining present within these type of um, arenas, we will then eventually naturally be guided. I mean, as long as we're willing to continue to dive back in and reflect. Yes. Uh, you can you, Then you can listen to pretty much anything, literally anything, and, and, and find and, and, the light in it. Yeah, not, because then you're no longer get, it. you're sort of, um, you're taking... I feel when you when we say those things like don't focus on that or you're going to invite this. Yeah, I'd say happens. the opposite. <laughs> why is there a charge there? Why is there? Mm -hmm. Why is? Why are you like so? Um, why do you not want to focus on that? You know exactly. <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> Let's go there <laughs> yeah. and take the charge out of it. So then yeah. it, it and and create a story. You know, if if one doesn't already exist, create a story around that charge that then d d uh, takes away the charge or makes it okay. So it's like, you know what? Yeah, let them have their alien avenger, uh, uh, alien, uh, I'm sorry, alien invasion agenda, <laughs> alien invasion agenda. Yes. Let them have that narrative <laughs> and let's see how that goes. And as long as we're aware and we're having the mm -hmm. conversation around it and exactly. we know who the players are, it's not going to be a big deal. They're not going to, you yeah. know, we don't need to scream at the top of our lungs because we're... right because we know who all the players are and we know uh, the agendas and we know, you know, not to get fired up about it because we know we're doing our CE5s and we know we have the direct connection to the ETs that, that are uh, helping us support our evolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so there's all these, there's a million narratives to counter the other narratives. Mm -hmm. And, and if in, in, in a lot of what my, what I do is I look for those, nuggets those positive nuggets uh that are that exist in uh society and in humanity to so if anybody has a uh well what about this and what about that and, da, 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 and, da, da, da. and i'm like well we got this and then <laughs> you got that and then you got this and and uh, and find the positive uh aspects uh mm -hmm. the part of positive storylines that already exist that can counter and uh, propel people in the direction of getting away from the fear stuff uh, and and uh, helping empower people to then choose to focus uh, on the positive. Um, mm -hmm. It's easy to focus on the negative because that's sort of what we've been entrained to do through mm -hmm. our media and through our social um, uh, uh, you know communities and different, um, you know, it's just, that's human nature in a sense. Yeah. Oh, I would say old human nature. We're moving into a a, a, a a new version of human nature that doesn't use the negative as a default. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's part of what we're doing is let's, let's, yes, not negate the negative. It exists, but there's this other narrative that is, you know, I think a more, not even positive to be positive you know i don't want to be positive just to be positive but actual mm -hmm. data that suggest this mm. is what's going on and there's this much you, you know thing uh, i think i sort of mentioned the um the the uh electric vehicle talk that got, got uh uh delayed and i'll just use that as an example so people can sort of understand so there's all this talk right now about um because you know this big new green uh deal the new uh investment that was it called the inflation reduction act that just got passed in america um and trillion not trillions but billions of dollars to fight inflation they're going to print more money to uh fight inflation which uh, <laughs> what's that's the logic hilarious there? i know it's it's crazy and okay and i think in anyway. europe they're doing the same same things yeah, i know yeah we're yeah. we're a little we're a few steps behind you but the yeah. same story yeah. the same story <laughs> so um and 
but and so within some of there's some positive in in the bill there's some positive things that are moving people to uh, a green environment uh, in mm. the sense, and when I use the word green, meaning more sustainable and 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 mm-hmm. more uh, using cleaner energy sources, which is a good thing. However, it's bunched into this crazy nefarious um, uh, bill, and uh, there's this big push for uh, a lot of the uh, you know the bigger groups, you know, control groups are trying to use this idea of of carbon tax and carbon credits to or, or uh, um, to um, raise prices of energy and cut out certain energy and do this. There's a lot of really bad agendas going on in this guise of uh, green, the Green mm-hmm. New Deal and these types of things, which I totally acknowledge. And I'm like, yes, it sucks because now what's happening is you're having a bunch of people who are aware of these nefarious uh, uh, projects and then they're throwing the baby out the bathwater saying that, okay, so like electric vehicles and green energy is now, it's all part of this bigger agenda to, con- so we don't need any of it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No. hold on now, <laughs> you know, don't throw the baby out the bathwater. Um, there's a lot of positivity that's coming from electric mm-hmm. vehicles or solar pa- power and, and, mm-hmm. and, and then, the, you know, the, a lot of people are like, well, there's, what about free energy? And I'm like, well, we don't have it yet. It's, mm-hmm. It exists, but it's not available to everybody yet. So in the meantime, these are transitionary yes. uh, technologies that we can try to implement as best we can. And um, so it's it's kind of, that that's just an example of um, not even trying to take steps in a positive direction because you just, that narrative and these people are doing that and therefore it's bad. <laughs> and it's like, well, no, yeah. now- Yes, it's good to call out those people and those things, and I mean, but now you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and you're not even taking any steps in the right direction to be yeah. in the vibratory frequency of free energy. What's the closest thing to free energy we have right now is solar, or wind. You know, these are or the ocean or the ocean. These, yeah. in a sense, these renewable energies. Yes, they're not perfect, and they're definitely not going to be what I foresee humanity. Uh, using as the end all for our energy but they are in a sense free because the you know how we understand physics now and what we're able to do with our technology we're able to harness these these naturally occurring energy sources uh and convert them to usable energy in our day-to-day lives um so it is a step in the right direction yes are there nefarious Mm -hmm. people trying to you know, use certain agendas and narratives to hijack some of these uh, 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 positive things in humanity? Yes, absolutely. But that doesn't mean we have to disc- discard. Uh, and, you know, there's this whole argument that electric vehicles are bad on the environment. And it's like, uh, the data doesn't say that. And, oh, but they're using, you know, they're mining horrible chemicals and all these things. I'm like, have Mm. you looked under the hood of any kind of car or the whole oil, um, uh, Mm -mm. you know, how much energy it takes to even move oil around? Uh, Anyways, there's a a ton of plus and minus arguments. Um, We don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And... Mm -hmm. um, and EVs in the frequency, electric vehicles are, I think, heading in the right direction. You mm. don't get rid of your gas car because we still are, mm-hmm. you know, needing that too. But there's this again, camps trying to fight each yeah. other. Well, mine better than yours, and no, 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 and all that. And it's like, no, no, there's there's pluses and minus. We need to look at all the data. We need yeah. to um uh, uh um again feel into the frequency and vibration of whatever it is you're 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 trying to explore or look into and don't get caught up in in all the craziness right now especially right now because everybody's trying to pick a camp and say i'm right and you're wrong <laughs> it's like wait a minute <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that going on <laughs> yeah, it is right it's yeah. it's crazy it's crazy yeah. how uh it's like well maybe there's some actually some good stuff in all of it right this is just exactly works exactly yeah 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 which i guess i'm probably not the only one who has been 
feeling very inspired to to go more inward <laughs> in the past yeah. few years and to yep. just really just look at it and from a little distance and you know hop in yeah. and out a little bit here and there checking it with the information but i love what you said about you know not throwing the baby out with the bathwater and I do believe that a little bit like the CE5, in a sense, mm -hmm. I think maybe I could make that comparison um, by moving in a direction of new developments that might mm -hmm. be an answer, if only a stepping stone along the way. Mm -hmm. We are, um, you know, um, passing our vote in a sense for a positive intent. There is an energy field and vibration that also yes. begins to move with that. Mm -hmm. And I really, I love looking for that. So in these yes. motions of the field, looking for a balance, because that's what we're all looking for. I guess even people who pick a camp very fanatically and get all nasty and mean, um, what I see behind that facade is just somebody who is looking for a balance. They're just in the... In, under the impression in that moment that balance can only be attained in this one way, <laughs> which right. with the intention is yeah. still, they're actually looking for balance. Yes. So, and I think That's there's so point. much, yeah, I do think there, there is, um, oh, well, 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 thank you. I do think there's in humanity innately, I don't think it is our nature to be to be negative or to be driven by like beliefs. I think it's mm -hmm. actually our nature to, well, not be artificially positive, as you understand, also exists, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to be genuinely positive and to see each other's souls, you know, like beneath or behind that facade of personality and crazy or whatever is going on there. Mm -hmm. Um because we've all chosen as a soul to be here together. And I think we can pull it off. <laughs> and you can call me, you know, like name yeah, yeah. or whatever. Well, you, I keep you, seeing you... that even in the turbulence. And there is a yeah. crazy beauty in it. That's how I'm observing it right now. <laughs> well, you also said, I think just to reiterate, you said vote with your actions and vote. With your energy. But, and with your, your energy. Intention. Yeah. Yeah. And and when we uh, when we do that, and then when we can recognize that other people are also doing that, then yes. we cannot get so upset at some yes. of the actions people are taking, because yes. it, let's try to look at things from their perspective. Why are they doing this? You know. Um, yes. The you motivational know, mechanism is the, always way more interesting than how it expresses itself. In, exactly. In the end. And. There yeah. was this, you know, we had the big camp of, you know, mask or no masks. And then you go oh, into yeah. this grocery store and people are judging people. This was, mm -hmm. you know, early on in the pandemic. People were judging people who didn't wear a mask and people mm -hmm. were judging people who were wearing a mask and in thinking that, OK, if you're not wearing a mask, then you must be a cold hearted person and you have no uh, concern for uh, grandma you know, and then that was one argument. And then the other argument was if you uh, were wearing a mask, you're a stupid idiot because you don't understand the science and the COVID can go through and you're just being stupid, you know? So, <laughs> and it's like, well, wait a minute, let's look at the intention behind mm -hmm. why the individual yes. chose to wear the mask and honor that and not yes. yell at anybody for wearing one or not for wearing yes. one, you know? Yes. So it was just like this the voting and the recognition of everybody uh, having the right to vote with their actions mm -hmm. and to um, to not criticize them or unless it's infringing on your free will or mm. something like that. But wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, that doesn't matter who, you know, that's not mm -hmm. infringing on anybody, uh, you know, unless you become a mask Nazi and you're telling everybody wear a mask or vice versa. And you're like, you cannot wear a mask. Um, yeah, th th that was that's a great example, I think, for allowing just to allow people to be who they want to yes. be and recognize the yes. beauty and why they chose to do that and not get yeah. caught up in the semantics. Yes. And that's what I think uh, seems to be happening or might be happening on the surface level. Everything is becoming very, mm -hmm. very crazy and chaotic but that actually really ushers us to go in and look beneath and to yeah. see what's what's happening underneath there and and you can't help but end up in the motivational mechanisms and wanting to look at that and yeah. that always brings peace and harmony and you know okay hey i can understand that i mean mask wearing has become a more 
you know common thing it wasn't yeah. that common in the west it was in asia it wasn't really for us yeah um but now i still see people sometimes on the bike in the summery weather beautiful just by themselves wear a mask but i yeah, a little chuckle behind people. that too <laughs> well it's you know i don't but know why they're doing we it don't, exactly you know, maybe, exactly maybe yeah maybe they just came from the dentist and it's a whole mess here and they're like insecure yeah. and this is yeah. like the perfect excuse right now to wear yeah. because it's considered more normal so yeah. i've gotten so open-minded with the many reasons why somebody might wear a mask yeah. maybe you know you know whatever reason you cut yourself Probably. shaving and you think it looks stupid you know okay uh, wear a mask because nobody cares anymore <laughs> exactly exactly so, so many yeah. different perspectives um yeah. So I've stopped uh, entirely assuming why somebody does a thing. And yep, this is yep. very freeing. Very freeing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and it's a lesson because even my comment just now, the little chuckle of, uh, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes you see the car and the windows rolled up and they've got, you know, a visor and a mask and all these things on. And you're like, logically, that makes no sense. But you're absolutely right. They could have their own personal reasons and we should not be judging mm -hmm. or laughing or, you know, it should be, this is a training ground for us all to, to, to let people be who they want to be at all times with no judgments. And, uh, who knows, you know, yeah. their dog pooped in the car and it smells like shit. Exactly. <laughs> put, put some perfume on the mask. And it's like I, a lifesaver. I, I was I always looked upon, I, I, so I've worn, I, you know, living in Asia and, and, and having, um, strong ties to, to the Japanese culture. And, um, mm. they wear masks all the time and have mm. for years, whenever somebody's sick, the, the idea was to yeah. contain, uh, mm -hmm. if you're sick, you wear a mask because you're sick and you mm -hmm. don't want to spread it out. That was the original thing. And then over the years, you know, more foreigners came into Japan and they didn't respect the, uh, the mask wearing, um, so when they were sick, they would be coughing in the trains and stuff mm. without a mask. So then what people started wearing masks to protect themselves from the people. <laughs> so it, it sort of flip-flopped and then every, mm. so, uh, but it's become quite normal to see people with masks mm. all the time now, not just people mm. who are sick, but just, you know. Mm. Um, so I would uh, wear a mask every time I got on a plane because the air in mm. the plane is recycled. It's terrible. So I'd put a little thieves oil in the mask, as you just said, and like a perfume. And I'd, wear the mask for these long uh um flights you know intercontinental flights and um i would and there's that, less dehydration less dehydration you wouldn't get yeah. sick i never i wouldn't get sick anymore i used to always get sick taking those long flights and mm -hmm. um and the the thieves oil and the essential oils you know boost my immune system they help yeah. um filter out some of those things so um so and i would be the only guy in the plane right wearing a mask and everybody's like <laughs> yeah. looking at me who's that guy what's that thing but now i can you know now nobody's gonna care nobody looks at me it's like the normal thing so i'm like so thankful for the whole mask culture to catch on uh for the right reasons or the wrong reasons whatever it is but it i think it is a a, a training ground for us to yeah. move into these non-judgmental uh, um ways of 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 looking at each other mm -hmm. yeah and i think when we i don't know if eventually we're gonna find each other in more kindness in that way yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. my vision for the future whether it will you know happen or not i don't know oh it but, has uh, to. we can't you it's can't definitely the vision I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, it's not to talk about sustainability it's not sustainable to be at each other's throats right this and, is so true and screaming and yelling and calling people names and this or that it's it's just not sustainable you can't energetically mm. you're going to get you're going to get you, you're going to kill yourself and, and yeah well yeah first they're tired and eventually it's not it's just not eventually no isolate future. yourself yeah you'll isolate yeah. yourself and you're you're going to be you know and and, and that's kind of what's happening we have a, a a huge amount of depression uh mm. across the planet people are locking themselves in indoors uh for 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 various reasons you know not just the 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 covet thing but because they're depressed because they don't want to see people because they because everybody else is is hollering at everybody you know and it's this 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 feedback loop of 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 um just not non-connectivity which mm -hmm. again another reason why i'm doing the ce5 is i'm like hey guys come outside yeah. let's connect in 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 a human form <laughs> 
uh, at least once a month. Uh, otherwise, go back to your, you know, your, your, you know, my world. I'm pretty secluded up here in the mountains. Uh, you know, I have my mm. neighbors and stuff, but uh, uh, I often, you know, get focused and I do my thing and I'm not really paying attention to people. But it's it's good to connect to people in mm-hmm. in a physical way. Yes. And and uh, and uh, I, so I think this this will be a short lived crazy short-lived i mean it's already been gone going on for a couple of years but short-lived <laughs> in, the, in the sense that it's not the way humanity is going to evolve to stay forever like yeah uh, it's it's going to be temporary. agreed yeah yeah i think so too absolutely and and i love to just you know loop it all back to where we started i love that's you know one of the reasons i'm sure why you started this portal to make it you know down to earth create that community get people together and you know, take action in the direction of what's preferred. Um, there's no better statement, you know, to do that than these type of uh, initiatives. So thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm going to put a link below this video in the description. Uh, if people want to know more, then they uh, they can click on it and uh, check it out. I'm going to be super transparent about this. It's an affiliate link. <laughs> so if you consider signing up, use yeah. that specific link, because in that way, you would also be s- supporting my own uh, contribution to this program. Yes. Uh, and I would really appreciate that. So that would be awesome um other than and the that, affiliate program is uh, open to anybody who wants to join yes <laughs> a little yes. Promotion there. So, yes yes uh, yes yes yeah. Yeah. yeah if you want to add some words to that please go ahead yeah, yeah. so uh so it's 15 percent. basically is uh is the percentage of uh if anybody signs up under your affiliate link you get uh 15 of of that revenue and uh i think that th- these are great programs affiliates because if it's I I'm a I'm an affiliate member on many other products, mm-hmm. um, I should use them more. I, I mean, use the links more and promote a little bit more. But mm-hmm. you know, if it's something you believe in, and if it's a yes. good product, what a great mechanism that we can uh, share in the profits of of yeah. of of uh, and and this is where you know I get into this in later classes. But NFTs and crypto and how all that's. Mm. The direction that's going is very much in in line with the energy of like an affiliate type of link mm. situation. So, um, yeah, these are just ways of sharing, um, sharing the information and sharing uh, in a positive, um, uh, in a positive way that we can all benefit from. Even if it's so, I'm sorry if it's only fifteen percent, but still, <laughs> it oh, still no, is no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, uh, but still there's some, some energy exchange there. Yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, even if it was five, (laughs) (laughs) I'm just, I'm grateful as it is. And, and I mean, I'm, I really support this cause. So, um, yeah, yeah, with, with love. (laughs) Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. And thank you for doing it uh, and, and offering this to the world. I mean, yeah, I just love the developments and seeing how far we've gotten uh, you with interviews with extra dimensionals over the years and so many people that have been on the show to see their journeys to, you know, review my own path of exploration. I'm just so grateful for the magic that is unfolding right here and now. And that's such a beautiful thing to be consciously aware of that this planet wow we're on one hell of a ride this is <laughs> it's like so much more than we were told it was when we were children it's i love it <laughs> absolutely and and thank you Edika, for for b- being going through the long haul in a sense you know this has been my journey uh for many years starting with you know uh just be meeting randomly not so randomly uh randomly in in sedona <laughs> and doing our interview and and just a, a big thanks to the audience again. It wouldn't, uh, you know, you and I both we wouldn't be able to continue these conversations in this form and fashion yes. without the audience's interest in having these conversations. So yes. it's it's an acknowledgement of all uh, all players involved, um, and and yeah, we're uh, we're choosing to navigate and ride these uh, the waves of change through um, this lens. And uh, just glad other people are resonating uh, with us and to allow us to continue this work and uh, go deeper as you are with your channelings and uh, looking forward to, to more of that. That's super exciting as well. 
Oh, thank you so much for that. And for looping it back to the audience, the viewers, everybody right now tuning in and watching this video. If you got all this way into the video, thank you so much for sticking around and for your interest and uh, your passion, your heart and your presence and your energy. I am so grateful for every single one of you. And I'm just going to throw in one last little announcement. There will be an uh, our June channeling live stream event upcoming Sunday, which uh, from now would be September 11th. Uh, I'm going to put a link to that event as well in the description below. Uh, if you want to join, you know, who knows, maybe you can ask your own questions to Arjun directly. And that would be really, really awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'm inviting everybody who feels the vibe and the um, inspiration to come join us there. And uh, just as Ruben said just now, uh, I'm so, so grateful for all of you and continuing to follow along with mine and his and um, so many other people's journey as we are all exploring together, learning together, growing together. Uh, yes, I'm just beyond words grateful for all of that. So, uh, Ruben, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Um, looking forward for any continuation in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and everybody who tuned in, again, thank you guys so, so much. I love you unconditionally.